Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a very special guest, the Hollywood Doctors coach, Ivana Chibak. Ivana, so glad to see you. So glad to be here. <laughs> well, I know you often in Moscow now because you've got a studio in Moscow. Yes, I do. And Russian actors are so privileged they can learn from you directly. Well, it, it, to me, because it's part of my heritage, there's something very passionate and expressive. And I grew up with that. There was a lot of noise in my household <laughs> because, because, and it's always very, it's very artistic. It's very dramatic. And uh, even the smallest things become dr dramatic. It's, a, it's, it's almost a society and a culture built for the dramatic arts. Which part of Russia your roots come from? Well, the interesting part about my roots from Russia is before it was, uh, they changed Russia and Ukraine and separated it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm aging myself right now because my, my mother uh, and her family is from but the time before Russia and Ukraine were separated and it was just Russia. And so it was at the time, it was from Kiev they were from, but it was Russia at the time. And so that's why they consider, my family considers themselves Russian and not Ukrainians. Although but it is now, I guess, Ukraine. You mean your grandparents? From grandparents, kids. yes. And you my, my, are... My, my mother was conceived in Russia. And you born in Michigan? I was born in Michigan. And uh, learn all your magic stuff in New York or LA? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. And life. In life. Life. <laughs> life is life. The, best, the, best life the best teacher. Because when bad things happen, and, and like life does, and all the tragedy and, and, and insecurities and traumas and, and fears that happen just generally out of life, I had to find a way that I could um, use it in the arts as a way to overcome and win with it instead of self-destruct with it because I was on a, on a bad path. Uh, because of all the drama and and hurt and pain that I grew up with uh, and uh, this is how the system of the Chubbuck technique was born because it's all based in a system a 12-step system that is it, it, it takes pain um, insecurities uh, fears and instead of self-destructing with it and having shame from it to rather use it to fuel your ability to overcome and win with it so it is a very powerful fuel if you choose to see it that way. It's the path of, of most resistance, but it's most satisfying when you're able to use it to win with as opposed to self-destruct with it. And, and then it's a very satisfying journey mm. for not just the character that you're playing, but the people that are playing it, they have a resource of it leads into their life, and all of a sudden they start to win in their life both socially and successfully in their career, but also the audience also feeds off of that. And so it becomes like um, a empowerment through the arts where the audience is taking um, uh, the, the journey of someone who's taking the worst of circumstances and turning them into the best of circumstances. And they watch the people um, that are doing this as characters and they say, God, this person has the same issues that I have and the same um, trauma that I have and get there prospering with it, maybe so can I. And then it gives a sense of hope to, and it's subliminal, but it's still the reason why people want to watch that TV show over and over again, or to watch a, a particular actor. Like, I always need to watch whatever that person's in because that person makes you feel good mm -hmm. to watch them. This is incredible. So you'd like change in minus to plus and also catch audience on the deep, deep emotional kind of Absolutely. together togetherness. Mm. It's our job because you're part of you're part of this to be able to explore um, taking the people that you interview and, and say, like, how did you get there? How did you take whatever circumstances that you had and, and found your way to a successful place and you dig in and you explore and that the, 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 the information that comes out that you get people to speak about is stuff that people are listening to and saying, ah, if they could do it, um, maybe I have hope to be able to have my dreams come true too. I must. That's really important. 
that you have that job too. <laughs> I know. I, I, actually, I must um, admit I've been on one of your trainings, so maybe I'll learn it from you. But uh, most obviously, oh, no. how to dig, 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 dig. <laughs> dig But dig, I've got an interview recording with, a, it's more like a documentary with one American ballet dancer in Bolshoi. Mm -hmm. And I ask him a question, try to use your technique, like deep memories of your childhood. I ask him, when did you first time the name Bolshoi? Mm -hmm. Tell me where you are, what you're doing. And he said, I was 11, I'm, I'm sitting in Arizona, little town, Phoenix, mm -hmm. and I watched Spartacus on telly, and and I was incredible. And we filmed it inside Bolshoi with a big stage behind him. Wow. And I asked him... That's so cool. I'm getting, I'm getting goosebumps. That's cool. I, I asked him, great, great experience. if somebody, you then, 11 yeah. years of age, tell you you're going to be a star of this theater, would you believe it? And he's like... No, and he's almost cry. It was like deeply, deeply yeah. touched. His yeah. earliest memory. Five. Yeah. You're good. You won the Chibak <laughs> <laughs> But let's come back to your method because I've I've seen actually how you transform mm -hmm. actors who come quite you know um, suppressed on stage, uh, and then they change dramatically. They start to cry. They start really grab your attention and your feelings. You mm -hmm. start to feel the same. Um, They're tears of joy, by the way, because it's a release. Yes. It's not tears of sadness. And people, if, if How awful do they play? No, no. <laughs> no, 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 but it's like, it's, it really is. It, there's something very, there's a girl who did this in the last, we just finished the workshop yesterday, and she, we opened up the door the first day, and then that night, she said, uh, the next day, that she um, thought it was, a, it was issues that she thought she had resolved. She realized, because she started to, to cry and cry, and cry, and all these things came up that she started to release. And then she used it in the work, and she was glowing afterwards because it was not only was she releasing it in the arts, because it, it, because you're creating a beautiful picture with your pain, but she also um, was feeling that, um, that it was, she was becoming powerful by it because people were responding and connecting to her, going, your pain is my pain, my pain is your pain, and that's how people fall in love, commonality of pain. And so she created a love story between her and the audience, and that feels good. So she was literally lighter than she was the day before, glowing and feeling so good about herself. So, so and, and, and even though tears were part of the, the, the equation. It wasn't, there's different kinds of tears. Some tears are mourning tears. Some tears are self-hatred. Some tears are release. And the joy of release and the freedom of release is just remarkable and special to be able to have the ability to do that and explore entertaining the masses. How wonderful is that? This is incredible. Yeah. I watch, for example, you working with one of our famous actor, Maxim Matveev. Mm -hmm. He's a very handsome chap, a he bit is wooden to me <laughs> as an actor, but I saw how you transform him. Mm -hmm. And this is like 3D models. And suddenly, you, how you manage to dig so deep? What, what do you use? What techniques do you use? Like, are you based on Stanislavski or Chekhov or, or Freud? Or how did you... All of, the Make above, you all of the above. <laughs> what you do is you take, you, you know, all art is based in somebody else before you. And, and then that person, someone else before them. And so it's our job as artists to keep growing and not to stand still. Um, that's for normal people. Normal people just like, they, they get to a place and then they just stop growing. But an artist needs to always continue to grow. And in fact, it's a great thing for, for most people, just never stop learning. Never stop learning, ever, no matter how old you get, never stop educating yourself. Um, the idea is, uh, is Chekhov? Yes, indeed. He's, he's amazing. He, he created um, a, a satire out of uh, culture. And so he found the humor in, in the drama. Of, of the culture of that he grew up in. Um, he, he's one of my favorite authors. Um, and I've learned a lot from always find the comedy and drama that I learned from Chekhov. Stanislavski, I found 
to be not be afraid of the things that are your darkness or part of who you are because that's the things you need to embrace as what makes you unique and special. Um, Freud, the psychology, the science of why we do the things we do because we're trying to duplicate real people. Um, we're not trying to play a person, we embody and become a, a character. How do we do that? The science of psychology, the understanding of why people do what they do, why the character does what they do, and then how that makes sense to our dynamic, which is the human equation and the human animal, which is the same everywhere in the world. The thing that makes culture is we all have the same needs. All people all over the world have the same needs. Um, I've done workshops everywhere, in every culture. Um, everybody has the same issues, the same insecurities, the same fears, the same abandonment issues, the same problems with their mates, the same everything. Um, but what makes culture is how we negotiate our needs, our common needs, given the, the weather, given agriculture, given all the things that come at you um, that creates religion, that creates um, the culture of creating survival, which I learned from, from uh, anthropology, because what I studied was cultural anthropology, which I use from there, psychology, which the father of psychology is Freud, but there's many, many, many versions of different thought ways of thinking, and I try to explore many of them, as well as behavioral science, which is the science of behavior. So basically, my technique is, is based on the sciences of being a real human being. And it's really fascinating. That's what's so cool about it. And what you're learning by Digging in when you when you the, I love that Bol Bolshoi uh, uh, story because that's they, that their experience is not only uh, you're digging into them but they're enjoying your communication. So he was almost crying because he was going he was going back to being the child and saying I'm really happy with what I, I've got accomplished. All I need for the camera is just emotion because he's very polite and, and kind of closed person. But you he, did it in seconds. Yes, I, you I, did I, it. I want, I want emotion. <laughs> I want like he, he realize what he achieved in life. But, but, he, but, but you did it. People want to go there. It's not you have to. You don't have to go like this. All you have to do is say, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you the ability to. Um, explore the freedom of who you really are and say not only do you have the freedom to do it but I'm going yay you whatever you are and all the things that make you neurotic and screwed up uh, all those things are the things that make you special and then you go oh yeah that makes you feel good and so then and you can take all the bad things that happen to you say though you wouldn't be who you are without those things happening so Oh yeah? Okay. So then it starts to feel like all those things, instead of feeling depressed by it, you're going, I couldn't be the person that I am today in all its glory without those things having happened. But this, you're a real magician and um, you're working with so many stars. Mm -hmm. I, I read it, I could not believe you're working with Brad Pitt, Sharon Stone, Charlize Theron, Beyonce, uh, Jim Carrey and many, many more. Mm -hmm. How you become a Hollywood actor's coach? Um, well, I came to Hollywood to be an actor myself mm -hmm. and I found that I really liked teaching it better than I liked actually doing it. I liked being the force behind the talent mm -hmm. as opposed to being in front of the camera or on stage myself. Uh, and I found that this very interesting way. Uh -huh. I found that I, I was working at a supermarket to support my, I was a cashier, to support, really? yeah, to support my acting habit. And I thought, well, this has got to be a more interesting way to make money because this is horrible. <laughs> this is a horrible <laughs> job. And uh, people treat you really badly. Um, and so I just started teaching people for a little bit of money and people started doing really well off of what I was teaching them. Then I started asking for more money and people were paying it and getting really great jobs and getting awards and things like that until it became this thing, you know. And then um, I decided that, you know what, I'm not going to be an actor anymore. I called my agents and I said, take me off the roster. I love teaching. I love teaching a lot. You, you watched me. You saw, I yeah, love it. You, you know, and so and I didn't love being on camera. Um, and one of the things that I always find is the barometer of that is time. Mm -hmm. I, when I'm teaching, I find that the time goes by really fast. Like 
I did this this workshop. It was like twelve hour days, and I'm like, God, it felt like an hour went by, not twelve. And when I when I'm acting, when I was acting, this was me. <sighs> Still here, like ten minutes felt like like hours and hours. It was like I was so bored. I was not. I, this was not what I love to do. So what the barometer of how time works is what, what manages what you really love and what you don't. And so I came to Hollywood to be an actress, but what I found through that was what my true passion and my true gift. Who were you uh, more proud from all your students? I mean, from Hollywood actors, who was your favorite? You know, like you really, really proud of your work. I know who I'm proud of you for taking the information that I gave in one workshop and turning it into a successful way to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. So right now, you are my oh. favorite, but mo I'm most proud of you. Because you tell me that story, and I'm going, wow, that doesn't just work for actors and writers and directors. It's like, work for what you're doing in communication, and, cre and you're creating some amazing communication with people. And I'm sure you have many more stories to tell that I'd love to, to, to hear. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day I'm <laughs> going to write a book about my interviews because people are so interesting to talk to them. Oh, they reveal I would themselves. So and... read that book. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be there as well. Um, about Russian actors mm -hmm. uh, your, and your experience in Russia. From 2013, you have a good studio here in Moscow. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe your experience here working with the Russian actors? Through the years? Yeah, well, last year. The most remarkable memory, maybe. There, here's the problem with the most remarkable. I have epiphanies and revelations every time I work with someone. It could be a private you know, coaching with somebody. It could be a class. But I have always these, these aha moments where I was like, wow, you know what? This is why my mother did this. Or... Um, this is why um, I, my child is going through this because this is really the underbelly of what she's feeling, which I never would have thought had I not seen someone who was having similar issues um, that I was working with and going, oh, that's why. So it's helping me negotiate my personal life as well. It also helps me grow as a teacher because I, have, I keep having revelations that I'm going to add more stuff. When I was writing my book, um, I kept having, every time I'd do a class, I'd, I'd have new stuff that I'd send it to the publisher, and I'd say, I don't, don't put it to the presses yet. I have, another, I have mm -hmm. more information. And they finally had to tell me, it's like, you got to stop. <laughs> you got to stop something I know yeah. is becoming. It's already 400 pages. You know, so. Yeah, I've seen your book. It's actually quite, quite, quite good and useful, I think. Yes. Because you give very simple but very useful advices. Practical. Practical, yeah, you can use it in every day. But in general, how would you describe Russian actors? Are they different from American or other countries you teach? I, I, I find that because people are people are people are people, this is the very nature of being the human animal, which is, again, the science of mm -hmm. the, the human experience. The, thing, the only thing that makes a difference is the cultural realities of things. And, and I find that in terms of... The, the Russian actors is that they're not afraid to express themselves. Where there are certain cultures that it's like, if you express your feelings, you, there's shame attached to that. There's dishonor to it. Um, of course, in those particular cultures, because people are people are people, they're like ripe melons ready to be opened up because everybody wants the freedom of their expression. The beauty of the Russian actors is that they're, they, are, they already have that permission to, to be expressive. Mm -hmm. Stanislavski is cool forever. <clears throat> <laughs> um, how often are you in Moscow, and when are we going to expect you more with the classes? Well, I, I have uh, so many new schools popping up all over the world, so I, I'm going to try to make it as much as possible, because it's, obviously, it's, to me, it's the homeland. And, uh, and I feel I, so much of my cultural realities are coming from here. Um, but right now, I'm, there's a new school that's starting to come up in China, and mm. I'm training some teachers in Los Angeles for the Chinese school. Mm. Um, the, I have a couple of teachers coming from Brazil, um, from Austria. I already have schools in, in Japan and Philippines and Italy and, uh, and Sweden. Um, 
London, pretty much like a lot of different places. And right now I have to kind of keep finding my way in different, you know, different places to make sure that every keeping up to date because I keep adding more information to the technique. So I hope to keep coming more often because I love the experience. This was like so remarkable, this, this experience I just had the last couple of days uh, because the changes from day one to day two was insane, you know, it was magic. And so I was, I want more magic. And so uh, I look forward to coming back again and again and again. You mean how Moscow changed or how people changed? The, the, you know, uh, the actors. So the actors went from like day one to the information to day two. The magic of what just happened like yesterday. <laughs> you know, so it's uh, in terms of Moscow, I don't ever have time to actually visit the places I go to, the uh, because what I do is I I fly in, I, I teach my class, and then I fly back to, because my home base in, in Los Angeles, they said, I have a school there with many, many people, and they, they wait for me to come back. So I can't, I can't abandon them. They're my children. Hmm. But um, how do you relax? Because your job takes so much um, psychological power. You know what's interesting? Because a lot of people ask me, don't, don't you take other people's stuff in and how do you get rid of it? I, I feed off of it. It, makes, it actually nurtures me. My, um, my chiropractor, my doctor who works on my body, says I always come back from teaching in better shape. And this is doing 14-hour flights and then teaching all day long intensives than, than I am when I'm just at home. And it's because that's I feed off it. I'm nurtured by it. I find vacations boring because I'm not working. So what I do um, is I I I'll, I work in the morning and I earn the right to get by the pool. That's what I, <laughs> <laughs> so what I do. Is I I'll, I'll coach someone on the phone. In fact, I coached uh, Sylvester Stallone on uh, Creed, uh, the original Creed. Uh, he had they given him new pages. And he said, he called me up and said, I'm sorry to bother you because I know you're on vacation. I said, no, 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 bother me because <laughs> I like being bothered. And so he said, there's some new pages. So um, I, let's talk about this if it's okay. And I said, of course, it's okay. I love it. And so um, he, I, I worked with him. And then he said, oh, I got to go because they're, they're calling me on the set. I, I didn't realize he was on the set calling me. So that's, that's how much he loves what he does is he... he in vacations, I think for people like me and him and, and people like the stars that you know and love, we thrive on the work. Vacations are boring. We, and, and I've heard this so many times from the stars that I work with. Um, it's just it's like the holidays come up and there's no work during the holidays. And we all hate the holidays because there's no work. Mm -hmm. We like to work. And isn't that, isn't that a joy <clears throat> to be able to find something that you love to do so much that that's what you want to do as your vacation as well? Uh, what would you recommend or give an advice to somebody who would like to become an actor? Um, don't take anything that anybody else says that you cannot do it, that you're not good looking enough, that you're not young enough, that you're not thin enough, that you're not uh, talented enough, whatever it is that people say that you cannot do, say that you're going to win and get what you want in spite of and because of them saying you can't. Win and prove them wrong. Get what you want. Don't give up because it can, your dreams can come true if you believe that they can. But you have to believe. This is a golden word. I, I just don't want to uh, spoil that moment. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, my interview is going to be like your book. I always want to talk to you. And we wait you for Moscow always. And maybe another time we talk to you again. Absolutely. Thank you for the, the, what a great interview. You are a good interviewer. Thank you. This is the best compliment ever. Thanks. You're welcome.